Ah, so I'm co-chairing with uh, Emily. Exactly. So you have the water, not in the water. And I also showed that July it should be the Ho appena ora ho stampato delle cose, sono scesa con delle cose in mano. Questo è quello che ho detto. Cioè siamo a condividere, non c'è più problema. The whole session goes through the afternoon, so yes, yes. I guess, uh, but you said you are leaving? Yes, I'm leaving uh, after you. You're leaving after me? Okay. So you will do the question to yourself. Okay. <laughs> As a chair. <laughs> but you, perhaps you introduce the first... Uh, yes. The first one. Mm -hmm. Two. You. Which one looks to have some information about me? Yes, I have this. <laughs> it's true, it's about it's on the internet. <laughs>
<laughs> I think that we can start, no? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is the afternoon section of the current status perspective of the workshop. Um, me, I am Enrico Russo. We, um, I am the uh, scientific director of uh, ASI, and uh, I'm uh, chairing with the colleague uh, um, Allen, uh, that is uh, the director of uh, Strasbourg, uh, Strasbourg Astronomical Data Center. Please. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, I have the uh, strange uh, experience of being uh, the chair of the session in which I'm also speaking, uh, so I'll have to keep myself on time when it comes to that. Now, I'm very pleased to be here. I'm the director of the CDS. Uh, I'm chairing this session. I was hoping that the organizers might walk in before the beginning of the session. <laughs> They're coming? I've been asked to wait for two seconds. <laughs> you already have your uh, presentation on the computer? Yes, okay. Well, let me go ahead and introduce uh, uh, Pepe after all. Uh, Pepe Fabiano is a senior astrophysicist at the uh, High Energy Astrophysics Division of the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory and also associate uh, of Harvard uh, University. Pepe, of course, has lots of experience managing the uh, processing of data for the Chandra, Chandra X-ray uh, Observatory. She also is the uh, chair of the uh, IVOA, the International uh, Virtual Observatory Alliance, uh, and leads the, the, the VO activities at CFA and uh, in the uh, US uh, VAO project. Uh, so Pepe is going to talk to us today about the IVOA with the title uh, IVOA, uh, the Standards Organization for Data Interoperability in Astronomy. Actually, I should say I'm not just in charge of the data processing of uh, the Chandra data. In my purview, it's all the software development, hardware, and archive as well. So it's okay, all thank the you. <laughs> Okay. Zoom is this one. No. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is different from uh, ah, just, just. Yes. Okay. Um this is the presenter for Great, thank you. Yep. So, um, what I want to talk about here is this uh, good enough? I think it will be. Yeah. No, this is fine. Okay. I'm just. Um, I, I, I'm going to give an, uh, a general overview of the International Virtual Observatory Alliance, which is the standards organization organization for data interoperability in astronomy. And we already heard about the IVOA before um, lunch break. Um, I'm going to take a step backwards and trying to define the virtual observatory because I think that will give us an idea of what we want to do. So one definition of the virtual observatory is uh, that it's a multi-wavelength digital sky that can be searched, visualized, and analyzed in new and innovative ways. 
And this includes space data, but it also includes, in the same way, ground data. <laughs> and we shouldn't forget about theory data, simulation data. Um, a different uh, definition is that the virtual observatory is the latest stage of good data practices in uh, astronomy. And if you take a bit of a historical view, we started with each data center or archive with a different or slightly different file structure, metadata, and table organization. So we have the data, um, but it takes work to access it. So the data is public, uh, it's open, but it's not transparent, and it's particularly difficult to access it, especially if several data sets are used to, together. Then FITS came, and FITS provided a first st standardization, not complete, but a good pass forward. What the virtual observatory wants to do uh, is the enact the natural progression towards interoperability of data, not just data, but also services and tools. Another definition which I, I kind of like is that the virtual observatory will provide new science and will provide new science via a three-pronged approach. We start with good data management and access, as I said before, and, uh, and as everybody here has showed, or several people, um, uh, if you have a good archive, most of the publication come, and this is the, the Chandra uh, version of a plot you've seen before, come from archival data, not from the original observer. Um, so the archive, a well-managed archive will foster radar data reuse, um, new science and public awareness. Um, then there is the interoperability. So what we want there is a flexible analysis environment that will put data tools and literature seamlessly together at the astronomer's fingertip. And I will show some example. And, uh, and finally, big data. This has also been touched upon before. We need workspaces, collaboration tools, data mining tools, and services. All of this will take us to the next generation of uh, data science and astronomy science. Um, so the virtual observatory is, you can also say, it's a paradigm for supporting interdisciplinary and collaborative research, education, outreach, and we can put in there also citizen science in astronomy, exploiting the full power of growing and emerging data sets. I want to stress that the virtual observatory is not a fixed system, but it's a way of doing things. It's a framework, and it's a framework for data centers to collaborate and provi provide cooperating data services and also for software providers to offer a variety of compatible analysis and visu visualization tools and user interfaces. How do we achieve that? We achieve it because we have a set of protocols or standards which is at the core of the Virtual Observatory. And these are standards developed within the International Virtual Observatory Alliance, IVOA, um, and these standards include uh, standards for data and metadata for all kinds of observed and simulated data, data exchange methods, um, registries, so lists and characteristics of the available services, and finally, application messaging protocol. So VO enables tools and services can interface seamlessly with VO enabled archives worldwide. Um, new data systems with the virtual observatory at their core and the IBOA standards and protocols are being developed worldwide as, uh, for example, Christophe was telling us about in the ESA environment and also in the Canadian CADC, so Gaia, Euclid, Australians are also taking this approach and uh, a growing number of data centers. Um, a bit of history. Um, the IVOA was uh, created in 2002 and uh, now has today, uh, today has 23 member projects and there are two well attended, attended interoperability working meetings that we do per year where people really develop their standards. Uh, another thing I want to stress is that the IVOA has, doesn't have any direct funding. And so the affiliated projects, they have to seek funding from their national agencies. 
And that means that with the fluctuation of funding, some members have come and some members have gone, some projects have persisted and others have stopped. But overall, things are working. And uh, we have learned how to do this work. Uh, we have learned how to manage the development of standards uh, via uh, a, a very solid management from, from framework and the use of roadmaps for development. And we have absolutely demonstrated that the participation of users in this process is important because you cannot have a standard imposed from the top if the standard doesn't do it for you. Um, and altogether, we are still there and we are, I think, <coughs> doing well and being more recognized. And this is because the virtual observatory is a, it's a good idea. Here is a, an org organization chart. Um, there is a top and a bottom, as many of these charts. The work all happens in the bottom, most of it. So there are six working groups, each one per standards area and six interest, interest group uh, per areas which are kind of relevant for either present or future development of standards. Um, and also one, a new one we have is operations that validates all the service worldwide that run IVOA uh, uh, standards and um, based on IVOA standards, make sure everything is up and working. Um, the management of this layer of working groups and interest groups, and these are the groups that meet twice a year, they also work of, of you know, not face to face, but via internet, but the, the, the decision is usually made in this work in these two yearly meetings, is there is a technical coordination group that consists of the chairs of each of these groups. And there is also up there a standards and processes committee, which is the committee that has developed the rules for this collaboration, and that's been absolutely important. Um, there on top, there is the executive committee. Those are representative of the 23 participating processes and the technical coordination group reports to the executive committee. The executive committee has a prong out to the science world via the committee on science priority by which the scientists and new project, emerging projects are invited to come and tell us what they need and invite to collaborate. Let me give you some IBOA successes. We have a stable architecture. I'm not going to go into details, but a number of protocols developed, all those blue boxes. And we also we have stable processes, absolutely fundamental, a way how to achieve those protocols. The documents are all accessible via the www.ivoa.net and also published in the NASA ADS, as you can search by author name. Um, there are several big archives in the Virtual Observatory. We heard about the CADC and ESA, uh, but we also have uh, uh, CDS, we're going to hear that next, uh, the um, Space Telescope Archive, MAST. Uh, URSA is the infrared archive in, in NASA, the Chandra archive, and, and there are several interfaces. And this is, for example, is the MAST interface which if you, I don't know if you can read those little boxes, but they will give you access, not just to the Hubble data, but also to other data, for example, X-ray data. You can go to Chandra from that, or uh, you can search, by, you can go to ESA from that. So it's all interconnected. Um, virtual observatory in data centers is another success, and uh, I think we heard very much from uh, David Shades about this, the f and uh, the fact that the CAC CADC, but also the new ESA archives, are built around these protocols. So they're native in there. You don't have to change your architecture to put a layer of interface, which lots of us have had to do, but now you can build your archive based on the AVOA protocols. Um, reliable operations, um, that's a very important point because we have hundreds of VO services in the IVA registries are these services all compliant? Because if they're not, a user may go there and the thing won't work. That's bad. So we have validators. And there is a new 
uh, inter relatively new uh, IVOA operation interest group that monitors operations by running validator. The chair is uh, NASA Tom McGlynn of ISAAC. Um, an aspect of the IVOA that I particularly like, being a working scientist, is the seamless science. It's a new paradigm for uh, research integrated archive literature and analysis session. So you now you have IVOA compliant user interface and you have IVOA compliant query protocols built on the, on, on the, on the, uh, the interfaces built on these protocols. We have uh, uh, SAMP, which is a, a VO interoperable application uh, protocol. And we have archive that link with literature. For example, in the case of Chandra, but the other archives have these two-way links by which you can search a paper and you can find data that go with the paper. This has to increase in use, but in the, not, uh, in the, in the, in the basic, um, it, it's there. Now, what can you do with such a system that links your data with your tools um, uh, that allows you to do database queries and then do analysis and search the papers that are written on this data. You can do a lot and people are doing a lot. Here I'm giving you a exa few examples of tools that people use and the average astronomer will not know that these are bio interoperable applications. They'll use them. And for example, the S9, even TopCat is used a lot. Um, by lots of people nowadays, and uh, there are some uh, uh, spectral engines. And I uh, Iris, Iris is a uh, photometry engine, and uh, and of course we will we'll hear about the Strasbourg application. All of this is there, and all of these tools are VO enabled, so they can work together. They can work with the archives, the major archives that are VO enabled, and. Uh, Later, if anyone is interested, I have a demo on my laptop I'm not going to show here. But basically, you can do analysis session by searching in the, in the, in the VO, general VO um, archive in the, in the top there, the VO data with TopCat, deriving a list of sources that then you can search against another archive, for example, the Chandra X-ray archive, and, uh, uh, and iteratively and interactively um, do plotting, finding outliers, go to the data products and do spectral analysis, do scripts, Python scripting is in the VO uh, C, and all of this can be done in one analysis session. It's very powerful and it really produces new science in an easy way. So this is the thing I'm not going to use. Um, finally, um, Education, outreach, and third-party application have also been enabled by the IVOA standards. Uh, I have two examples, EuroVO for education, which is a suite of IVOA compliant tool and use cases. In the top box there are some use cases, and you can see all the flags of uh, various uh, groups and nations that were part of that use case. And even commercial uh, software like Worldwide Telescope uh, I mean, it's, it's open source now, but uh, was developed by Microsoft, um, was inspired by the Virtual Observatory and is compliant with the Virtual Observatory and is now the American Astronomical Society has adopted it as a main outreach engine. Now let's go to the new project engagement in the IVOA. Um, as I said before, the development of standards is not, uh, should not be a top-down activity. It's very important that uh, we listen to the users. Uh, the input of the project is important, but not just the input, also participations. Because a project needs to try out the standards, see how they work for them or not, and come back to us and be part of the development. So new science projects are welcome to participate in the standards definition and development, and that happens in this IVOA process. Um, this is an example of how this may happen. There is a, the IVOA Committee on Science Priorities that seeks input from, for science driver, and Mark here has been the chair for a long time. And for example, this, this process has identified faster 
track standards. We, one, one of the ALMA needed a data cube, so we started working on data cube standards. Standard. Um, this committee also organizes focus sessions with project in Cape Town uh, in May 2016. We had a, a session that was uh, uh, titled Interoperability of Data from Major Astronomical Observatory. And if you look there, uh, presenters and, uh, um, and project, I mean science project telescopes, you see a representation from all the major upcoming big telescopes. So, just to conclude, I want to say that the VO is not a killer application. It's not a one portal that everybody jumps in and then you find yourself in this wonderful universe. Instead, it's an evolving ecosystem. And the IVOA defines the virtual observatory ecosystem and the standards. Um, the registry, the, the virtual observatory registry, uh, archive interfaces, and VO enabled <coughs> software give entry points to the resources of the virtual observatory, visualization, and analysis. But it is to the astronomy projects to, uh, and data services to build VO services and applications based on these standards and so serve the community. And uh, uh, projects, new projects are welcome and encouraged to participate in the project of standards and uh, within our frame. So I would, I would like to, to say if uh, this open universe project goes ahead, which I think is a very good idea, I would welcome you to somehow find a way to be part of the IVI family so that we can develop as needed standards that will serve your need and will serve our need as well and, and grow on whatever we've been doing for the last 15 years and that's it. Thank you.